What's up guys, Jessa here, and today we're gonna do something a little different. I am super excited for you guys to meet my friends, uh, Delton and hopefully Ryan will be joining us as well. They're going to uh, give us a tour of their farm. It is called Equality Farms, and I think you guys are really going to enjoy this. So stick around, because here we go. 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 That's all yours if you get it. Go. Go. Nope. <laughs> you just have a collection like shingles. All right, what's up, guys? It's Jessa here from Life at Sycamore Ridge, and as promised, I am here with my friend Delton here at Equality Farms, and uh, we're going to give you guys a tour. But we thought we would do a little Q and A as we go. So go ahead and kind of tell us your your story and. My name is uh, Dalton and I am the co-owner of Equality Farm and Foods. We moved out here um, about three years ago. Me and my husband uh, run the operations here. We have, he's the animal man and the chicken man and I'm the garden man and he, um, we do goats and farm fresh um, vegetables. We try not to use or we do not use any chemicals on the property. All of our seeds are non-GMO and we try to do um, the most of what's right for the earth and what's right for what should be in your body and what shouldn't. Awesome. So what got you guys started on this, this well, path? We, I grew up here in Iowa and I always just remember like when we, we would drive like through here and Ryan grew up on the other side of Iowa and when we first started looking at houses we wanted to rent like a farmhouse. We wanted to be able to have a garden. So. In Omaha, we had we were on a quarter acre, which is pretty decent, you know, in the city. And we had a big garden, and we had the chickens, and then we had some poison ivy. So we decided we wanted to maybe rent some goats. Well, we couldn't rent any goats, so we bought goats, and we had those in the city. Oh no, kidding! And it was like the neighborhood attraction, you know. Everyone liked the goats. Everyone liked the garden, and we just finally kind of outgrew it and we always knew we wanted to be on an acreage so um the market was just right and we're like the only way we're gonna do this is like let's just sell our house and see what happens and so we sold our house and we just kept looking and looking and looking and then we found this place it needed a lot of work but it had you know the space we needed and we started selling eggs in the very beginning in omaha just good meats at the stores there and so we're like, if we could do this on a quarter of an acre, what could we do if we're on three to five to 10 acres? And so it's just something that I've always been super passionate about the quality of food that goes in your body and like the quality of food and like not having like chemicals and big things that aren't supposed to be there. And Ryan's always just really had a um, strong passion for animals. Uh, when he was little, he always jokes his his parents caused this because they would give him stuff to animals <laughs> when he would ask for certain animals and so um i always said you can have any animal you want as long as you can take care of it and i'll take care of the garden so um right now we're at capacity as far as animals i've kind of drawn the line there's no more that we can have <laughs> unless we do a little switcheroo or get gain more acreage but that's kind of like the backstory I remember draw in omaha drawing our logo for equality farm and foods and it was always just this like thing that was in my head that I even have I have this huge thing like all along that I just written down like this is where we want to be this is what it looks like this is what our logo so it's been ongoing for at least five years now we're here in the ground and the soil and the things are getting back to where it needs to be anyway yeah so it's just been <laughs> been, our, our, been our dream and it's here and it's coming along and we want to have a store out here but in the meantime we do have our website once these produce, like you get this produce pop in, um, it'll be on there. Um, we'll have our organic chickens, which are coming today, yay. And we'll have the beef and the pork, and they're all um, grass-fed, no chemicals, no antibiotics, nothing like that. Awesome, very cool. So you mentioned the store. What is kind of your timeline and future? Well, like? yeah, we really, the store really in, was supposed to be here last year, but COVID happened, um, the price of lumber has gone up. Um, I don't necessarily think we need a storefront, but I think it's kind of important. We need a place to have 
our big refrigerators and things like that to keep the vegetables. I would hope if timing's right, maybe next year. But as far as right now, I mean, and the way that things have changed even with COVID, I mean, with the online and things like that, I think, you know, we could really be like successful on track with that. But I hope to get a store out here maybe next year. Right. So other than COVID, just in your whole journey, what roadblocks have you encountered and had to overcome or are still yeah. trying to overcome? Well, like I said, you know, when we bought this place, no one had lived here since 1995, so we didn't even barely have water here. And so every time we'd get the ground exact, like almost back to where it needed to be, as far as the ground, as living, you know, so that's a challenge. Every time we had barely water sometimes, we had, we cooked on a grill, you know, for the first few months that we were here. We, as much as uh, food at the Emerald Isle as a human could ever desire. <laughs> The biggest part is the grass, like our, our fields out here were, it was a cornfield. So getting soil that had been farmed for, you know, 20 years plus, um, getting that soil back to where you can actually grow anything in it has been one of the biggest, hardest things for me. Something we still kind of struggle with um, is having, at, at some point in time, but we need to get water so that it's more accessible outside. Right. Um, in the winter, it, it's buckets because these things are frozen so hauling oh, buckets gosh. of water um out there and you've seen on my i can't youtube you've seen it but you've seen on my youtube i took <laughs> yeah it was your idea i took the sled when yeah. ryan was like and i had to pick i took the sled with the hay out there um and another struggle is just kind of if we could have a little bit more tree like we need shade out here um for the animals so if you know how to grow a tree real quick, a couple of them, <laughs> that'd be great. And then, you know, like almost like you've experienced, you know, it's just uh, just like the lifespan. Like you just never know like what's going to happen, like what's going to happen. So right. those those struggles, like, yeah, I just try not to really get super attached to anything out here because it's always like there's always a chance or a risk that something's going to happen. The fencing, that was a of the struggle oh i bet um, yeah that was me and i don't, Power I don't see a tractor no there. yeah no no tractors um that was all um that was uh you you learn a lot um but yeah that that fencing was like one of the biggest but most important things out there. right right so, infrastructure yeah infrastructure big time i'd like to do i would love at some point to get some um greenhouses out here uh and um you You'll see the big barrels out there, but get those up and running with water because, like, we've gotten some rain, but we, like it's been so dry. Even like last year, like it was a super struggle. Oh, yeah. So if you can catch the water, we have a cistern, and that's a whole another YouTube story. But <laughs> yeah, we have a cistern that we could pump water out of. What about and we, you and I have kind of discussed this a little bit from a marketing standpoint, being in such a rural area. And I guess I've got two questions is, you know, it's kind of an uphill battle with traditional agricultural folks and, you know, everybody around here has a garden. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And how do you approach that challenge of marketing your goods, you know, your organic, free range? Yeah. What's I'll, kind of been your approach to that? I just, I don't, I try to find, um, I don't, I don't know, I try to educate people too i i don't know it's it, it has been it's really different from being in um the omaha market and out here but i think if you i come from a strong sales background and i think that if you can present yourself you know where you do have a full package you know and people are believing you and trusting you and if you can get your product in front of them like for example when we took our purple tomatoes to the royal farmers market you know a lot of people were like, no, I'm not that, no, I don't even know what that is, you know? But if you could just get them to open their mind a little bit to even try it or experience it, and we still do deal with it. Like we'll be down, you know, at the restaurants and you'd have these big farmers, you know, and they're, they kind of laugh at us, you know, like, cause they're used to, they're doing like hundreds of acres. But the thing what, what they don't really understand is that at the end of the day, if they could change a little bit of what they do, they could make a hell of a lot more money. I've done some research, and I would love to own enough acreages to do it. But like corn, like big corn mazes, they can program them into the, their big tractors with their GPS, and they can make almost triple to four times more oh my gosh. off of their land 
by doing something like that right, instead right. of this big. But like, so one of our things is, so our zip code is 51533, okay? So my philosophy is if we have 51 quality products, 51 quality products, and we can make $1,000 a year off of each of those products, that's $51,000 a year. And I don't think we're far-fetched from that. We have um, our chicken eggs, like we were talking about earlier, is they're great quality eggs. They're a lot of work. We sell ours for $4. We never cut ourselves short. If the people around here would have laughed, or you know, smaller people around here would have laughed at it, not take it seriously. There are people that will pay for the quality products. There is disposable income out here. You just have to market the right people. We do a lot of, a lot of our market area is kind of focused in the Omaha area, um, but we're as picky as people are, we're kind of picky about our customers. We know exactly who we're targeting. We know exactly who wants our product. They know they want to get it from us and they know that the quality is always going to be there. So I think it is not bragging about yourself, but at least letting people know that it, this isn't easy work. Uh, and this and what we're doing, you and I, and all, you know, all of our small groups out here is what small Iowa is supposed to be. Right. If you do the research, and you can even talk to people about this, I do it all the time. I'm like, it was never ag. Like this big corn and soybean, it, it, Iowa was not supposed to be like that. And so I always take that approach. I was not. Supposed to, and then if you have new things, you know, if you can just like get someone just to kind of open their mind, because we do, we have a lot of weird, weird stuff. Yeah. Compared to what people, <laughs> but we also try to take it into restaurants where they do want to try something you know, kind of weird or different, you know, yeah. like those rat tail radishes. People will sit here, grow all these radishes in the ground, and then prune them out, you know, and it takes forever. Where I can do rat tail radishes, three rows of them, I can have them all summer, and I just pluck them right off the vine, and they're the same, almost the same thing, and they look cool in the salad. So if you could just kind of spin someone's mind to thinking, you, right. you know, you could probably, you like, know, like really the get quail them eggs, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, that makes so. sense. I personally haven't yet experienced it, but you and I have the in common that uh, we are both in alternative lifestyle relationships yeah. and in ag that it's not super common. You know, I, I run into it a lot on the internet, but certainly not around here. Have you had any challenges with your, you know, relationship and, right. you know, people, you know, coming to a, a farmer's market and... Ew, I don't want to buy from you. Yeah, this is going to be um, a little long-winded, but I'm going to, I'll just go through it. Okay, so our farm is called Equality Farms and Foods. It's for two reasons, because we believe in equality, okay? And so you, um, we have the equality, and then the Q is for quality. And so it, out here, I was born and raised in um, Iowa. Growing up, we had a little bit of a problem with it. When we came out here, I don't think we had a very fond... People took to us very quickly. Um, we had no problem with like our like the big farmers out here. I think it's just our package of like who we who we are and where we come from. I've never, I mean, I've had some problems with certain people, but overall, it's our brand, right? And so, people out here have been people all together. All of our customers have been nothing but always very very and surprisingly when we came out here. Just because, not because we're um, in a gay relationship or anything, but just because we were newer, people kind of, you know, laughed at us. They thought we weren't going to, you know, right. succeed. And, but um, overall, um, after people have seen what we've done, I mean, we have not had any, it, it, probably the exact opposite, awesome. to be real honest. Yeah. yeah. Uh, nothing but full support um, from the very, very day one that we've started out here. That's so. awesome. Been married all 10 years, you know? Yeah. That's, yeah. that's awesome. Yep, we've been married 10 years, and um, our bond is strong, and Ryan and I even each other out, and it, and it shows in the, like, even from our customer standpoint, like, I try to, be, I'm, I'm pretty professional, I'm pretty punctual, um, but then Ryan's always just got a little bit more, like, and I'm like, oh yeah, don't forget that, you know, but... I'm more like outgoing, like, hey, Jess, hey, try right. my purple tomato. It's really <laughs> weird. I know you want to. Try the purple tomato. And then Ryan's kind of like more like kind of business on this, you know, on the side. So, but yeah, I mean, nothing but major support out here. Like huge support. That's out awesome. Here. Hi, Bo. Bo was a, he was a rescue of three. And Bo went to another family and then 
they couldn't keep him and they came back to us and now he has a god family that he goes and visits and Aww. loves them and now Bo is my baby and he's the best farm dog ever he doesn't mess sled with chickens puller. <laughs> yeah sled puller <laughs> doesn't mess with chickens doesn't fight with any animals he's the best that's awesome you got you got lucky there and what breed are we guessing that he we're is? We're guessing that he is a bull mastiff. That's what the sign said at Horshland. <laughs> mastiff spelled incorrectly. But oh, now. gosh. <laughs> we're going to do a DNA test, though. So. Oh, that'll be awesome. Yeah, maybe we could do a YouTube uh, reveal yeah, of reveal. what Bo is. That is awesome. Because look at this. Like, this tail that <laughs> Yeah, like almost like a husky tail. Yeah. That, or chow, or I don't know. Yeah, chow, husky. Yeah. Yeah, it could be a lot of things. His color is gorgeous, though. Mm -hmm. I know. I just brushed him yesterday, and there's this. Oh, and he gosh. rolled in fish when we were on vacation. Oh, my gosh. Like I told you, you know, we're always looking for help, even if it's like a day or two, or if you want to come out. Like, we're trying to go off the philosophy of anytime you want to visit, if we're here, we, we appreciate that. Kind of give us a little heads up, <laughs> just because um, we have some sketchy neighbors sometimes. But anyway, <laughs> uh, but also uh, check out our website because there will be, um, our vegetables are going to start going on there. The meat birds are coming in today. The pork will be on there. And then, um, like I said, we're working with other um, local people that do things that are a little different than what we do. And so... Uh, Bo and Anna's microgreens will be on there and just whatever kind of local stuff we can get on. I need to hold myself to a little bit of higher standard getting things on there, but the website is up there. It is paid for and it's pretty user friendly. If you're running into any glitches, let us know. But yeah, <laughs> check us out. And there's tons and tons and tons and tons of content on our Facebook page. And I tried YouTube, but I can't do it. <laughs> I'll link it in there. <laughs> it, it can be a lot of work. That's why my videos lately have kind of been here, there. Oh, there's another one. <laughs> yeah. I can show you some of the things in the garden. Yeah, um, the Hathaways actually gave me these, the guys that you're talking about, oh, the beard. No kidding. Yeah, they're from uh, dialysis, water dialysis tanks. Oh. And so he was going to help me get these hooked up. Yeah. So I have two pumps for them, too. And the garden looks a little less weedier than last time, I think, maybe. Well, I thought more green, that's for sure. They're kind of popping. I guess they're, I mean, they're getting there. You, what kind is plant? These are the French, what are they? French breakfast. French, yeah, French breakfast. Yep. And then, uh, so it's radish, lettuce, lettuce, radish, weeds, I mean lettuce. <laughs> and then more radish, more radish. And then down here, I have some like celery and carrots and some more rat tail radishes. Did you do peas? No peas. And I'm super stoked about this garlic. You can see like little beets in here. I need to get in here and weed, but there's beets and carrots in between there. Oh, nice. And these carrots are actually doing pretty good. Oh yeah, I can see those. Oh yeah, I see your beets. Look how good this broccoli is doing. It needs water now that we did, it got hot. And then, this is a radish, and then beans, 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 and then I got more beans, purple beans. Oh, those over are there, cool. yeah. aren't they popping good? Yeah, those are cool. I'm gonna do. This was the spinach, but I covered it because it was getting way too weedy. I couldn't maintain it. Oh, yeah, my rose doing good. So I'm gonna put a couple more rows over there in succession. But my tomatoes are doing decent, but the neighbors they have them popping up over there. Really? But they must, you know, they're using chemicals. I'm sure. Oh yeah, I was gonna say yours look about like mine. And then the I, some of these got a little, a little hot on top of it, but. It's hot right now. We, we, I should probably water. I know. I went and pulled my milk jugs off, which I'm glad I did because I had some that are like trying to break out. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna see what this is. That is that eggplant? Yeah, eggplant. Yeah. yeah. Um, these ones are doing pretty good. 
Oh yeah, those do look They've cool. been out here since the 1st of May. And these are my, uh, these are the tro um, those trophies. Oh, I, yeah. And that's why I like, I told you I like them, is they're so sturdy. They always germinate quicker. And they grow really, 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 really awesome. Yeah, I planted a lot of those. Don't take pictures of the ones that are dying. <laughs> <laughs> They'll bounce back. Yeah. This one's looking, these are looking. These are my two favorite right here. The, and that's the only two I'm going to do next year is the Niogis and the Trophy. Because look how good they're doing compared to the other ones. Oh, wow. That's the only two I'm going to do next year. What's the second one? The Niogis. Niogis. Okay. Yeah, it's like this. It's spelled like this. Well, that's not even spelled correctly. <laughs> yeah, those look really good. You know which ones of mine look the best is these funky white Thomasols. <laughs> They look like the healthiest plants, and I'm like, these are so weird. I hope they're good. I just did them for fun. Isn't that weird? I won't do any other tomatoes next year. I said that last year, too, but I'm not <laughs> going to. Oh, I just love them. I love trying new stuff. This was going to be corn. Oh, no, look, my broccoli. Don't uh, look at this broccoli. Don't look at this broccoli. Oh, it'll bounce back. Yep, you'll be shocked how well it'll bounce back. I hope it rains. We need it. Yep. All the rain and no hail. Damn. Please. Yeah, some of these peppers kind of took a dip. But yeah, this, yeah, these are hot. Well, it, it is pretty hot today. Yeah, it's warm. They'll, be, they'll bounce back up. Yeah, I was just thinking this morning I was putting a tomato in. And it looked kind of pathetic. It had like a bend in it. So that's why I was like, I'm just going to plant this myself because I know it'll be fine. Right, right. And I was just thinking like, you know, if you can just get it in the ground alive, like your chances are so good that it'll be fine. Yeah. And once we get a little rain, I might even put a little water on yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. But they, they were looking great the other day. And then I got all these cucumbers in. They're doing oh, awesome. Oh, heck yeah. I haven't got any of my cucumbers in. I never start the cucumbers inside. I did a few and yeah, it's the transplant. They don't seem to do very well. Uh-uh. And they'll pop. I mean, these germinated in four days. I oh, think. yeah. Yeah, those look good. And then, so the pigs have been at work for me. Remember when you were here last time, they were here. Right. Now we've just kind of moved them down. And so I got some more. Uh, they're called uh, rattlesnake bean. Yeah, I've got a bean. few of those. And I planted those. They'll vine up here, and they're awesome. And then I'm almost done planting. I might get some other stuff like in here but and then um over the fall i already told you this but i'm gonna take i'm gonna take my other tarp and i'm gonna put it out and then this is all it's gonna be two times that of oh yeah of garlic straight out because look at the garlic it obviously oh amazing. yeah it's doing amazing tomatoes are like meh <laughs> you're too stupid we don't know how to live on our own <laughs> thanks for that actually pretty good yeah, those are good. Which variety is that? It's the purple diamond, I think. Mm. They're little. They're 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 smaller. I did some little fingers. Yeah. Those tomatoes down there look amazing. Something's already getting the top of those beans. Some of that. I have that from every year. I stuck some more in between. I think the pigs got over here. <laughs> Because they were out when we were on vacation, and they said the people up the road watch oh. watch everything, and they're like, "I think we got to them in time, but I don't think they got too much destructed, mm. but I think they just got a couple of off the top." Hi. This is that's Kid Rock, and that's Mr. Free. Oh, I don't know his name. <laughs> and then um, that what that other white one's Casper. Nice. So he Casper's intact. That one's just there to be a homeboy. And then this one's intact, yeah. so we'll have to... Look how scared they are as a dog. What'd you do to them, Bo? They're just... Bo wouldn't do anything to them, but they're just like... Look, well, that's actually pretty good. And Ryan um, is going today to get the um, organic meat birds processed. Oh, okay, okay. So I'm so excited about that. Like, um, some water, don't yeah. I? Yeah? 
that. You think you're getting fed? These guys have been on the channel before. So, wine and swine. Oh, yeah. You got that's a uh, Reba, Garth, Leanne Rhymes, and Bacon. Gosh, I wonder what that one's for. <laughs> Hi, guys. And then uh, they just rotate so you can see. They have, they just got over here, they have some grass here, and then we'll rotate them back over there. And then this huge patch right here that all the animals are crazy about is oh, yeah. full of clover and That's grass. What I was so say. that looks good. They just kind of, we just kind of keep them rotated. When does Bacon get to earn his? Well, name? Bacon was going to be here. He was going to be sooner, but I think he's going to get a couple more. Months. They will literally, if they're out, they're so friendly that they will come to you like a dog. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know if I'd want to butcher an animal that friendly. I know, it's hard, <laughs> but you know you know that they've had a lot of love. Oh, they don't yeah. look like it. That's what I always have to tell myself is like, if I don't eat this animal that I've taken care of, then I'm just eating another animal that was terribly and, abused or yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. And, a, and, and that's just like the chicken up the road and they're you know free range and they have an, a massive building but those chickens aren't free range because they're never outside right they just have a door to go outside you go, big pigs. they're working big pigs. so they cleared out all and they cleared this. all out this they cleared out all of that earlier in the winter they were over here where that is and then they just kind of been moved you know around and then they kind of got this out you know for the most part a lot of it and then they poop in here. Ow! Yeah. Uh -oh. got bit. <laughs> <laughs> there goes the Ow! Something bit me. It was a bee. Oh, probably. Or something. Uh, I heard you guys are getting bees this weekend. We are getting bees this weekend. We are. Where well, you got that one on video. That was cute. <laughs> I don't know if I was looking down or not. We're getting bees and... Um, the last two baby goats are um, leaving. So all the babies have been sold awesome. and we'll get bees this weekend yeah so there's the weed garden i always sing to ryan you know the rose see those carrots are doing pretty good oh yeah yeah those look really good oh yeah coming. you got good and see those beets are doing pretty good right there oh yeah and these carrots are doing pretty good and that dill is just wild because i planted it there one year and i'm just it's no big deal to me I'm oh yeah yeah, I throw a little dill in about every salad because it's so darn prolific. But I put these like along the fence to kind of help me with that. Oh yeah, well, yeah it kind of looks good from this angle. I always sing to sing to Ryan. I never promised you a weed garden. <laughs> <laughs> we can look at the big boys over here. Oh, okay. Well, considering that from where you're standing right here, this garden, all the way down to that second pasture three years ago, was a cornfield wow. like that and so three years worth of trying to get the soil back and there's actually worms in that soil it's pretty freaking amazing that is awesome try to keep these if someone could come up with an idea these i hate them six string like just everywhere it, it, it gets in the mower well doesn't hasn't yet but could you know and it, So we drove, we can walk down here, but Ryan and I drove every single T post that you see by hand. Oh gosh. With yeah. this. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, you don't, even, <laughs> you don't even have an old heavy one. That's what I got. Uh oh, here's those are, those are babies. So we rotate them from this to this pasture, and I gotta get the hay guy to start not just putting it here, but kind of moving it around. Oh, right. So this, even this will break down and be really good. Like this was all cornfield too, so even this will break down and be good for the ground. We planted all of this um, with grass a grass and clover mix here look they're down here they're like there's the green stuff
You can see the how the terrace where it was. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely remnants of a of a field. I like yeah, grass. Well, hi guys. Whatever. There's a couple. Oh. oh. I wish Ryan was here because he knows all the names and everything. Oh, yeah. But the, they're, we're keeping the last couple. Uh, there's like two of them that we're keeping or three. And then the rest of the little babies are going. Hi, babies. Are you following? What are you doing? Are you going to come to me, sugar? Are you going to come to me? Huh? Do you know she has a camera? What are you doing, girl? What are you doing? Flies are coming out, huh? Hi, Clyde. He was rescue. Um, it's been about mm, a year since we've gotten him, and he was bred to break bull, and his hoofs were so bad that he could barely walk on them. And then she was um, she broke cattle. Mm. So they've had some. They've had a hard life, but they're they're having a happy little retirement out here. <laughs> And they fight for attention. It's really? so crazy. Yeah, they we did rescue them, but um, their job is to protect the goats and stuff. And they do. When we had the babies, um, they would sit against the door, even though they were locked in, and they would just like hover against the door, like no one's touching these babies. That's awesome. Um, except for when we did first get sugar, um, and with our the for our three original goats, we put. Um, Oh, no, not our three original, the three new goats that we got after the original. And she had the, the new goats by the neck and in her mouth. She did not like that at I've all. heard of that, yeah. But she's calmed down now. But, yep, they have it. That's their job. Um, that's Frank is the red one, and Chuck is the black one. And he will be Chuck Roast and <laughs> Frank. <laughs> and I so Ryan has been petting the cow and getting really friendly with it. So I'm like, don't do that. Don't do that. How do you feel about uh, being right up next to a cemetery? I love the cemetery. So um, really quiet neighbors, right? Yeah, very quiet neighbors. Um, the uh, so the people that had our house are actually like on the closest thing to the cemetery as you can as you can see they're tombstones are right oh, there okay and so i just feel like they are like we're with you like every time we do something out here and i i ask like i'm like well i don't know would francis and lewis approve of this is this the right color would francis and lewis like this and so every time we get like a good breeze or a nice like wind or something i'm like oh they like it they're with us they had uh big gardens and stuff and this would have all they would have had all the acres as far as you can see around here including um, that house over there. So I love, I love having the cemetery over here. It's really cool. Like in the winter time and in the summer and I like it. We, um, had a friend that, um, got cancer. She's kind of older and she always, she kept wanting to come out here and see the goats and the animals and everything. And she's like, I'll be out there sooner than you know it, you know? And she would always say that. And I'm like, okay, you know, whatever. And so we we walk around over here, and one day Ryan was like, is that Lonnie? And I was like, oh my god, it is. And so this whole time that she kept saying that she, she'd be out here before we knew it, she's literally buried, like, right where these, like, right across where these animals are. Oh my god! So she kept saying, I'm going to come see the goats, I'll be there before you know it. And I had no idea that that's where she met. Wow. So yeah, that, that first time goosebumps. I seen her, yeah, I got, it was like, oh. So, so I like the cemetery. We got Lonnie out there watching over, and we got the original family out there. All the whole family's over there. So that's awesome. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. You want to be on the camera, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at him. They're like all excited. <laughs> You'd be nice. You'd be nice. I try not to get too attached with names and things and like too cuddly or anything. Just easier that way for my mental health. As far as the animals are concerned, right. Ryan does it. And 
there's a lot of things I know about, and there's a lot of things I don't know about, yeah. and I prefer to keep it that way. So is that kind of how you guys divide the labor? Is he's the yeah, he does the animals. Guy. I can answer enough questions to be dangerous, and he knows all the ins and outs and the details. And he does not like the garden. He does oh. not like the heat. He does not like the summer. Well, that works out good then. Yeah. You don't like the cold. Or... I hate the cold. You are, any of your YouTuber followers know someone that wants to come and stay in our Apex or Ultralight Coachman. Oh, yeah. Um, and do a little farm help, we can work something out. Definitely. So just to throw that out yeah, there. Yeah, definitely. Like all this grass and stuff, like by the time we did all the work, dug all these new lines and sewers and everything for the house, like this yard was like, it was the freaking destroyed when we got, no one lived here since like 1995. And then that house over there uh, was originally part, this is all one big property. Okay. And they brought all this house over from Council Bluffs with um, horses and trailers. I'll show you a new chicken coop. And where this chicken coop is, you can kind of see the slab. There was a big old chicken coop, but the trees had landed on it. Oh, okay. So we had to tear it down. Um, so we finally got this moved over here, and this is like was part of the thing. Is we're like we knew it was right because Francis and Lewis, uh, they had chickens. They had the chicken house, so it's like they wanted someone out here. Oh yeah. And then this tree here above is like one of my favorites, and almost the only tree out here we're working on anymore. It's really pretty. Is it like cherry. It does that pink, like the pink little um, flowers in the spring, oh, and it's okay. like really bright pink in the spring and then after that um I, I can't remember what kind of tree it is but it is beautiful in the spring and then uh when we first moved here the beetles almost took it out uh but i think our chickens help with the lar they eat the larva mm. and stuff you know and so these those ones right there are my favorite Oh, they, little bantams? Yeah, the little bantams, because the little tiny eggs that they lay, yeah. I swear to God, and it's, a, it's proven by me, they are so easy to peel for, like, deviled eggs and stuff. And then, that's the coop. This is, I don't know if I this is kind of a cool view. This would have all been forest. I actually know someone that used to hunt here when they were little, and they said this was all, oh, wow. all wooded. I was never supposed to be like that. <laughs> I can show you uh, um, the trees that we have planted. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is where the um, that's where the meat birds hang out. So that would have been another one of the original chicken coops. Okay. Look at these things falling. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do here yet, but I got the compost. This is all chicken manure and um, the wood chips on here. And so it would make a really good garden. I just haven't gotten around to fencing it. And I'm thinking a little late this year, but maybe next year. Technically, at some point, um, if lumber ever goes back down, this is where we're gonna have a building right here. And then we just, these are some of the one, two, three, four, five. Got a couple apple trees. And I think peach, peach tree, a couple of them died, but those ones are doing pretty good considering. How long have those been planted there? Um, we planted these last fall down where that pole was. Unbeknown to us, we didn't know that wasn't our property. So um, early, early this spring, we dug them up and brought them back over here. And I was worried that they probably wouldn't make it, but they, they're doing good. Yeah, they seem to be doing just fine. And then we'll do more events like out here facing that way. I'd like to build like a little stage or something. So I think it's really cool. If it's actually really good to hear, like you can hear the birds and the owls and stuff like that. So like that means that like there's some good things going on around here. I feel like even the three years we've been here, and we are, we haven't done that much, and I want to do a lot more, and I want to do a lot more trees, but I feel like it's just come alive even more. Like, I don't remember in the beginning even hearing this many, like, not those birds, but, like, actual birds right. and, like, frogs and 
that soil had not a worm in it when we started. So it'll be, it's three years. So we'll see in three years what it'll look like, but it's, it's going good so far. All right, that is all we got. I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later. Bye. Get it, Bo.